In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Meta. Good morning. The Russian Orthodox theologian Alexei Komiako makes a bold and a very insightful statement regarding the church in one of his writings. He says, we know that when any of us falls, he falls alone. But no one is saved alone. He is saved in the church as a member of it and in union with all of its other members. Komiyako was saying that we as Christians indeed need each other. We are our brother's keeper. We need each other's prayers. We need each other's encouragement. And we need each other's love if we are to grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We are further urged in Galatians 6-2 to carry each other's burdens. And in this way, we will fulfill the law of Christ. We all have burdens, and God does not want us to carry them alone. In today's Gospel, as we take it from the second chapter of St. Matthew, we hear about a paralyzed man's four friends literally carrying him on a pallet or a cot so he could approach Jesus. Up to this point, the healings of Christ were merely physical. But now the physical healings pointed to something deeper, a deeper spiritual reality, which is the ultimate healing, and that is the forgiveness of sins. Christ had just returned from preaching outside the city to the house where he was staying in Capernaum. And most people just think that this was the house of St. Peter. But Christ's popularity meant that many more people wanted to see him. When the crowd about the door made normal entry impossible, the friends of the paralytic did not give up. Such was their faith in Christ and their determination to find healing for their friend. They carried him up on exterior steps and went up on the roof. And in those days, most of the roofs were flat and made of what we would call tile-like rocks matted together with straw and clay-like substance. Thus, these men were able to dig through a section of the roof and lower the paralytic man down. One can only imagine the astonishment of the apostles and the other people seeing these four friends of the paralytic lowering him into the room. Then when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Now the question becomes, why did the Lord first speak this word of forgiveness when the obvious need and request was for physical healing? The answer is that Jesus had divine insight and knew that the man particularly needed forgiveness. He addressed the paralytic's greatest need and the common root of all pain and suffering, which is man's sinful condition. In the last verse of the story, we hear that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. The word for this past week's Lenten focus here at St. John's has been community, which is also one of our parish's core values. Therefore, I would like to take a moment and zero in on the four friends of the paralytic in today's gospel lesson and see how their actions relate to that of community. The word community stems from the Greek word for church, which is ekklesia. Ekklesia literally means an assembly or gathering. Those call out as a New Testament community. The Christian church is the assembly or community of God's chosen people called to keep his word and to do his will as well as his work in the world. 
The church needs to see itself as being called out by God. If we as the church want to make a difference in the world, we must be different from the world. God has called the church to be separate from sin, to embrace fellowship with our other believers, and to be the light of the world. One aspect of the gathering of the church of community is kinonia, a Greek word translated as fellowship, sharing in common, communion in the Bible. Kinonia is more than friendship. It is a divinely intimate, holy unity among believers and between the believers and the Lord involving everything from spiritual oneness in the Holy Spirit, community life, sharing contributions ranging from money to food gifts, and the communion expressed in the partaking of the body and blood of our Lord. The first occurrence of Kinonia is in Acts 2.42, which describes the life of the first church. There we hear, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayer. A powerful example of what kinonia should look like can be found in the study of the phrase one another. In the Bible, Holy Scripture commands us to be devoted to one another, to honor one another, to live in harmony with one another as we hear in Romans, to accept one another, to serve one another in love as we hear in Galatians, to be kind and compassionate to one another, to admonish one another, to encourage one another, to spur on one another toward love and good deeds, to offer hospitality and to love one another. A pretty exhaustive list. Now isn't this what the four friends of the paralytic exemplified in their actions. First, they were kind to, devoted to, and honored their paralytic friend by bringing him to Christ. They served one another in love. They were following the words we hear in Hebrews 10, 24. Let us consider how we stir up one another to love and good works. Secondly, the four friends took the initiative. They were ordinary people. We, in fact, never even learned their names. However, they had a strong faith. They believed so strongly that Jesus could make a difference in the life of their friend that nothing would discourage, deter, or dissuade them. Thirdly, they worked as a team and spurred on one another to accomplish this good deed. One or two friends could not have accomplished this on their own. They shared a common purpose and goal and joined with one another in bringing the paralytic to Jesus. They followed the words of Philippians 2, 1 and 2, which states, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded with one another, being united in purpose, and serving alongside each other. Sometimes God acts in a person's life because of another person's faith. It might be the faith of a grandparent, the faith of a friend, or the faith of a relative. This is why prayer is so important in our lives. We never know how the Holy Spirit will work in a person's life. Our responsibility is to pray and then let God act as He chooses to act in His way and in His time. Jesus healed the paralytic because of the faith of the paralytic's friends, as well as of the paralytic faith himself. The practice of the Christian community makes the gospel a living reality. 
It embodies a specific personal way of life together in Christ. It strengthens us to live the life to which we are called. If we think we can live in total independence and self-sufficiency, we are deluding ourselves. We simply cannot fully experience the power or the benefits of life with God with all also being drawn in together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. St. Cyprian of Carthage emphatically states, He who does not have the church as his mother cannot have God as his father. Therefore, like the four friends of the paralytic, let us as a Christian community follow the word that's found in Romans 12, 9 to 13. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. May we do all this for the glory of God and for the building up of His Holy Church. Amen.